Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new to my channel. But I wanted to make a video to do my 2020 year ahead spread and I thought I would do it with all of you guys. I normally do this anytime, um, either just before or just after the year flips over to the new year. I had thought about doing it this year around Samhain time, but I just didn't get around to it. And I already had my year ahead from the prior year from January through December. So I'm gonna do the same thing today. I'm probably not gonna make this super fancy, but I did wanna use my Crystal Unicorn Tarot by Pamela Chen. This is illustrated by Lisa Higuchi. This is a really nice little independent um, deck. I did get this when it first launched, I think through Indiegogo, and I really, really love this deck. It's basically a Rider Waite Smith clone, but the images have been redrawn with unicorns as our main characters. And this is just not a deck that I necessarily reach for a ton, but I love having it in my collection. And I thought using this deck for my year ahead spread would be a really wonderful way to sort of connect with it because, uh, and get to see the art more often because I just love it and it just doesn't get enough love. But if I'm using it for my year ahead spread, then I will be pulling a card every single month and actually displaying it so that I'm viewing my card of the month. So that is how I like to work with my year ahead spread. I have a display stand. I have a bit of a like a tarot altar here in my room and I like to keep the cards out that I'm working with as part of my spiritual practice and that usually includes whatever my tarot card of the month is, the card I've been working with from dark moon to dark moon or new moon to new moon, and the card I work with from full moon to full moon as well as my shadow work card that I've been working with. So that is how I do uh, my display cards. So I thought it'd be fun to have this out all year. Now last year, I actually worked with the guardian tarot. I'm actually just gonna grab that and show you guys. So the guardian tarot, has been living over there this whole time. Um, and my card for December was actually the Four of Cups. Now the Guardian Tarot was a deck that ranked pretty high for me in 2018 as one of my favorite decks for self-care. And so I really thought I would love working with it for my uh, year ahead spread for 2019. And so I got to work with this deck all year by pulling the cards that I had pulled as part of my year ahead spread. I did find that because this deck was being used for that, I didn't tend to reach for it for a lot else. And that's okay, but I feel like that's one of the reasons why I think the Crystal Unicorn will fit very nicely into that niche for 2018. And one of the things that I did is I just kept a small slip of paper with just a really messy scrawled list of what my cards of each month were. And then every month I would just go into the deck and I would pull out those cards. I had them pre sort of clumped together on top and I would just open up the little guidebook and I would read the message from that card for that month and I might journal about it and that was my sort of practice. So I really enjoyed that with the Guardian Tarot in 2018. So let's pull out, oh, I get to actually hang this up again. Oh, that's exciting. So let's get started with the Crystal Unicorn Tarot for, I kept saying 2018. It's so confusing. I'm gonna do this for 2020, this was for 2019. I did not do that practice. I did a year ahead spread, but I didn't actually like do that whole practice in 2018. Oh my goodness. It's confusing when the year flips over. All right, so I'm gonna get started in just one second here. I like to hit a little bit of cleansing smoke before I do any reading. And some Palo Santo. And lastly, I also like to work with my Seeker Oil. This is from my Witch's Moon box. And I only use a little bit, but I just like to take a bit on one finger and stick it in the center of my left palm and then rub my palms together. One thing that's really nice if you work with magical oils, especially if they're very fragrant oils, like the anointing oils from the Witch's Moon, is after I've rubbed my palms together, I like to bring my hands over my face and just breathe in. Hmm, okay. So, focusing on my year ahead for 2020. I'm gonna be pulling one card for every month of the year, and I'm also going to pull two other cards. And I think I'm gonna do these two other cards at the beginning, and those are going to be 
the energy, the overall energy for the year ahead. Let me back up. I already have the energy of the year ahead. Let me think. I'm kind of crafting this as we go. So I have my actual yearly card that is selected numerologically. So my year ahead card is actually the lover. So that'll be my energy card, which means I'm going to pull two cards, one for the primary obstacle or stumbling block I may encounter in 2020. And the other card will be the blessing of 2020. I think that sounds good. So I'm going to pull those first and put them in the center or up at the top. We'll see what fits here on my table. It's going to be challenging to get 12 cards out. We'll see how we go. I may have to do it in two parts, like six months at a time. All right. So we're going to be looking at obstacle and gift. And then one card for every month of the year. All right. I know that's a lot of shuffling. And I'm going to cut the deck. Obstacle. Strength. Now the strength card for me definitely represents sort of working with your shadow, working with the things that you need to do to grow, to evolve, um, coming face to face with stuff you need to improve, looking at the tough stuff, right? And making peace with it. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Still have that dang cough. Okay. So we're going to put that right up at the tippy top. And the next card coming out here is going to be the gift of the year, the eight of swords. And to me, because we're looking at this in the in the position of the gift, I'm going to be reading this card, and we'll look at the guidebook as well to kind of parse these, but I'm going to be looking at this card as sort of release from that bondage or that expansiveness that opens up when we sort of um, stop keeping ourselves stuck and preventing ourselves from moving forward. So there's going to be a real push forward in 2020 as well. That will be the gift. So I'm going to put that guy right up there. And let's take a quick look at the Crystal Unicorns little guidebook just to see if anything stands out on those two cards. I'm probably not going to do that for all 12 or we'll be here forever, but let's just take a peek and see. So for strength, we have... With the confident energy of the Tiger's Eye Crystal, you are in control of the situation, handling the situation with compassion and love instead of by force. You can catch a fly better with honey than vinegar. Fearlessness and love are how this unicorn tamed her lion. Reverse, we're looking at fearful, vulnerable, and weak. So maybe facing some fear or some um, in intense vulnerability in 2020. And the Eight of Swords in a positive position, because we're looking at that as the gift, is going to be... Is it at the end? Oh, there we go. Eight of Swords. When this card appears, unicorns are telling you that you are frozen and blinded by your own fears. You can't see past your fear and it is making you helpless. Look at the so all the swords and surrounding that are surrounding you waiting to cut you loose cut through your fears let go of what is blocking you and you'll be able to reach your goals so frozen in prison and helpless or release free and open so again release is what stood out to me as well now we're going to look at all 12 months of the calendar year so we have january the nine of cups oh beautiful i love the nine of cups it's one of my favorite cards and so far that's definitely working out because i'm definitely feeling very blessed and very free this january February, we have the Queen of Wands. Come on, camera. There we go. So confident, dynamic energy. March, the Hierophant. Oh, that's really interesting. So some decks actually call this de this card the teacher. And what's really exciting is that in March, I will actually be speaking. I'll be leading a short um, presentation at Northwest Tarot Symposium. So that's kind of exciting. I don't know if that's all that card will mean, but we'll see. April, we have the Five of Cups. Aw. Oops. There we go. And May. Oh, there's one more card. Apparently, I can't count. We have the World. So far, I'm seeing a lot more positivity than usually it's a little more mixed, so that's really nice. The World is about completion and things wrapping up and sort of that last piece falling into place. And then in June, I'm looking at the Nine of Swords, where we encounter some anxiety or some fear, getting in our head or in our own way, my own way, I shouldn't say our, this is a reading for me. And then we have, I am going to scooch everything over. I'm trying to make sure everything stays in frame, because I'm going to do the next six months after that. So far, not a lot of wands. Well, we've got cups, wands, cups, 
swords, no earth yet, swords. Okay, so now we're looking at July, that's my birth month. We have the five of wands, so rivalry, competition, some conflict, but not usually something super earth shattering, at least in my experience. In August, Peggy, in my anniversary month, we have the four of wands, Ah. In September, the page of pentacles, there's our earth. Getting things done, being enterprising, resourceful. We have the Four of Pentacles for October. Oh, it's going to make me really happy looking at these all year. For November, the Hanged Unicorn. So some waiting, some perhaps sacrifice. And for December, the Ace of Wands. So something new, lifting off, or a bit of inspiration, an idea, something. And I've noticed that this past December, I had lots of creative ideas and lots of kind of push. And I do think the darker half of the year tends to lend itself to that for me. So overall, the only really super challenging cards I'm seeing for myself for next year are going to be the Five of Cups. Um, obviously, these two are going to play a major role. We've got the Nine of Swords, so some worry, some anxiety, some fear, but that's good news in a way because the Nine of Swords also doesn't speak to actual things crumbling and falling apart, more that there's a lot of worry and perhaps even overthinking in one's own head about that. But the rest of these feel mostly productive. Um, this feels about right for that time of year. We'll see how it actually plays out. But yeah, I will be revisiting these. I'll be reflecting on each one during each calendar month. So this Nine of Cups for January is going to go right up onto display. And I think I'll keep these two as well somewhere where I can see them so I can look at my challenge and my gift for the year as we go through. Now to make this even a little bit easier for myself, I'm going to take a photo of this spread with my phone here. And I'm going to go into my phone's printer app. And I'm going to take a, a photo from my phone's printer app. And let's see what we think. That looks pretty vibrant. So I am going to print this photo. And it's going to go in my tarot journal. Boop. There we go. Now it finds my printer. And print. I love this little device and I have been using it a ton. Now that this photo is saved, I can make another one of these um, printouts anytime I want, but this prints out on sticker paper, which is really great. So I can actually put this right in my tarot journal and do some journaling about my year ahead spread, write some thoughts, and have those to refer back to, which I think will be really useful. I know it's kind of like watching paint dry, isn't it? It's not the fastest thing ever, but it does do a pretty good job. I will say that if you get one of these, I do find that I get the best results when I take my photo um, from within the actual Canon photo printer app. I just feel like it does a better job with color balancing and stuff from there than if I import it from a picture I've taken from my regular phones. And there we go. So now I have all of my cards, I can paste, tape this into my uh, tarot journal and have a record of my year ahead spread for 2020 and if I need another photo um, later, if I need another one, I can do that. So that is my year ahead for 2020. I would love to hear about yours if you feel like sharing. If you've made a video like this, I'd love to hear. And just as a reminder, I did this spread with my Crystal Unicorn Tarot. This is by Pamela Chen and Lisa Higuchi. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you all again very soon.